So they've given Yemen hundreds of millions of dollars in, in military aid and economic aid now, under the old dictator. And now under this dictator, to the U.S. government, this messy little thing called participatory democracy has not been anything in great favor, I don't think, from the United States. It's it's easier to deal with the dictators, and they had a, a loyal dictator who was giving them the green light to do all of the drone strikes. And now the vice the vice president under the old dictator is now the new president, the interim president, and nothing's changed. He's just been public about the fact that, fine, it's, it's okay with me if you in the U.S. kill people with drones. He's very open about it. The good point that's happening now is because of this national dialogue. There are 565 people from across Yemen and across ethnic spectrums and economic spectrums um, have been placed on a national dialogue and they're discussing the issue of drones. And the indications are that, that they will pass a resolution that is supposed to be enacted by the future governments that drone strikes are uh, illegal. But then that means that people in the ruling party are actually voting against what the ruling government is allowing to do now. So that's what the indications are right now. However, as this gets closer and closer to the final vote, no telling how much pressure is going to be put on all the parties to you know, to, to vote against that measure. But right now, the people we talked to were saying that um, the people in the National Dialogue want the drone strikes in there. Okay. Well, we were on one level low-key because it's a dangerous place and people get kidnapped. On another level, we wanted to make sure that at a certain time, people knew that we had been there and that we were there as a, as a delegation that challenges U.S. policies on drones and Guantanamo. So we did have a vigil in front of the U.S. Embassy that um, was greatly appreciated by the families of Guantanamo prisoners. And we had probably 300 people that came out of families of Guantanamo prisoners. Um, and the drone victims that we're talking about, both in the north and the south, uh, all were very appreciative of the fact that the international community was taking um, uh, notice of what had happened. That there were individuals, Americans, that had come all the way to Yemen, and they said, you all are you're here to talk with us, but our own government hasn't talked to us about what happened to us. So that, you know, that was poignant, uh, that their, their own government, and I guess one could see why, when the government had given the green light to go ahead and have the drone strikes that kill people, and not necessarily, I mean, many of the people we talked with, their loved ones said they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, so to speak, that the drone strikes were actually after what the U.S. considered to be a kind of, uh, and their family members had nothing to do with Al Qaeda, but they were in the wrong place. Either there had been an airstrike, they had gone to see what had happened and try to rescue people that were at the bottom of a house that had been blown up, and then the U.S. struck it again with another, another missile to kill everyone that had come to rescue. And that's pretty typical both in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, and in Yemen, that the U.S. does that, the double tap, so to speak. And they recognize that it's their government. I mean, they, they actually don't think their government will ever do it because the government is the one behind the killings. The go their government now does. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, the, they say, well, why don't, why didn't our government help us with electricity, help us with water, help us with all these things that sometimes some groups of Al Qaeda will help. With. Sometimes, not all the time, uh -huh. but there are instances in certain sections of the country where groups have come into small villages and said, oh, we'll help build a little school, we'll build a little clinic, we'll do something that the government has never done before. And even though it's with a group that they recognize has uh, a very uh, violent and complicated history, which may get them in big trouble with their government for allowing the and it's, it's not really allowing me they may have more guns than anybody else in the village has, so they're going to be there no matter what. 
right. and they say, okay, we'll build this stuff for you. It's like, okay, thank okay, you. like that, but um, it's kind of with the knowledge that something may happen because of it. Well, a lot of people of the, uh, the government has uh, put in prison a lot of people who disagree with, uh, with the Yemeni government policies or who actually have committed criminal acts. While they're in prison, uh, they may become radicalized by other people that are in there. Uh, when they get out, they many of them have to report back to government on a regular basis. And some people have been killed right after they've reported back to the government that they've been, you know, they've, they've been released from prison. They've gone back to their homes, but they still have to report back to the government to let them know where they are. And we met with several groups who said that they know right after they reported back to the government. So the government knew where they were. If they wanted to put them back in jail, they could have captured them, they could have done that. But instead, the government chose to either kill themselves or ask the United States to do it for them with the drugs.